Welcome back. My name is Relevant. This is Do All The Things. On today's episode, I'm trying to sort out the crappy FX loop issue on the SLO clone that I built. Now, if you're familiar with the Soldano SLO, it's common knowledge that the effects loop on it sucks. It pulls off a cathode follower here and then drives the effects. Then we have recovery. And one of the common mods to do is to replace the 2.2K resistor with a 1K and then add a bypass cap on the recovery. And, you know, I tried that in my Jet City and, and it didn't work. Well, it did cut the signal a bit, but it, it still sounded like crap with my pedals. The problem is when you drive too much signal into certain pedals that are expecting a negative 10 dB signal and you drive a lot more than that, it, it kills the frequency response. It, it makes them sound duller. It might work, but it, it's just... Central sounds babbly. And for reference, the Jet City has the identical schematic. It's pretty much an SLO clone. Uh, the preamp's voiced a little bit differently, but the effects loop is exactly identical. Now, there's two things that go on. You know, when we change it to the 1K, yes, there's less output, but there's still too much output. And then the recovery, adding this bypass capacitor, well, it's a quick and dirty way to boost the, the gain of the recovery so that it can compensate for the attenuation that's added to the send. Thing is, I don't necessarily like that because using a bypass capacitor doesn't just increase gain but it increases gain within certain frequency responses that's one of the reasons why it's commonly used up in the beginning of the preamp to shape your tone it causes the tube stages to become responsive to certain frequencies instead of just all of them so you can focus on which you want to boost and distort by adding a bypass capacitor, you color the tone. And in fact, in the Jet City, I didn't like the way it sounded after I added that by bypass capacitor because that, that tube stage no longer responded the way I wanted it to the tubes that I liked. The tubes that I liked in it were no longer the good sounding ones. Now, in general, this is one of those amps that by the time you turn it to four, it's pretty much max volume. And seeing how it's an amp designed for preamp gain topology, not the cranked amp tone, that, that ratio is kind of off. So under normal circumstances, if you're doing the 1K mod, I wouldn't even bother with the bypass capacitor. But, you know, we might have to, because if we want to attenuate it further, we might actually need a bit of a boost, because I've been experimenting here a little bit. So let me show you what I found so far. I got the... Uh, the old signal generator set up here to a 1k uh, sine wave if I turn up the volume very unpleasant sound good thing we don't need to hear it now if I bust out my meter and I test the output on the send uh, 2.7 volts that's entirely too much now we have a chart here that I found. Uh, you can look at that URL there that tells me roughly what voltages I should expect from certain dB output levels. This might not be the best way to measure dB, but it's a quick and dirty reference that I'm using for now. Now one of my meters said we were getting about plus eight dB right here, but that number doesn't quite match up. Uh, honestly, I'm still trying to figure out the best way to measure dB here. My Simpson 260 meter, this old vintage actually has dB measurement capabilities on it. If you set to the 2.5 volt AC range. Oh, look at that all the way up there. Oh yeah, bud, we're getting like almost plus 10 dB. Now, if we take a quick look at how some other people do this, I'm gonna take a look at the PV5150 because according to some historical research, apparently the 5150 is based on this amplifier. Van Halen used to use an SLO and then he, I, I guess he copied it and made it his own at some point. The send has something more like the 1K here and the 100K at the bottom. We have a grid leak here because we have a typical input Input stage that has a, a capacitive on it and then it sends to the sense it has a, a capacitor the one u capacitor in here i think might be exacerbating the situation these guys use a 0.33 but then we have a 100k strap to ground here that's going to attenuate the signal on the recovery stage 3.3k with an 0047 bypass and a 68k on the top Cool. What's the Soldano use again? A 220. Does that actually give us what we want though? I'm under the impression that the bigger value here raises the gain of the tube for reasons that I don't quite understand admittedly at the moment. So if we do just straight up attenuate this, uh, let's snap on a 100K here and see what happens. I'm literally just gonna take this popper and I'm gonna connect it to the output and a ground. Now let's see what we get for the DBs. Uh, a little bit less, but not a lot less. Hmm. Now this Boss Digital Delay I have here is a perfect example of a pedal that just was not having it. 
It sounded like absolute garbo in both this and the Jet City. In fact, even in bypass mode, it just couldn't handle it. Let us plug an actual guitar in and see what the tone is like. Because hearing that squeaky squeaky is certainly not easy on the ears. It doesn't really tell me anything tone wise. All right, so that 2.2K, we can easily tack another resistor on there. What happens if I just take a 470 and we do that instead of a 1K, but then we're adding it to the 2.2, so that's not necessarily the correct value that they call for in the schematic. Yeah, it does attenuate. <laughs> Pedal seeps have the side effect of boosting volume. Let's uh, get our meter here reading the signal output. Hey, we're kind of in line with where we're supposed to be. Until we turn on the effect. Okay, so bypass capacitor. Let's add that back in there. Need more clippy clippy touch leads. All right, uh, one dare and one dare. I think that's progress, but how does the tone compare? Let's remove these mods. It's, it's really close. It's like, it's quite the close race. So we're adding a 470 ohm to a 2.2K, 387. I think a 470 will do. So it's, it's less than what's prescribed in the mod. And it does change the sound a little bit. There's a little bit m less saturation. There's a bit of a, like a hump in the mids now. But it seems I can compensate by adjusting the EQs a little bit to get it back. I'm also going to try a 1U on the bypass because I feel like I get why they chose that bypass. Yes, it colors the tone, but it does so intentionally because the sound thins out with the mod and then the capacitor fattens it back up. So, small victory. I'm also trying the 1U that's often prescribed. <laughs> Not sure that that one you fattens it up quite as much. Where'd my 2.2 go? Okay, yeah, definitely a 2.2 U. What happens if we go even further? Sometimes a 220 U is often made for a full fattening. So what happens if we add a 220 U here, sir? I gotta retro apologize, I didn't mic the cab today, so... Honestly, this started me with me tinkering in the lab, trying to scratch my head, see if I could solve this problem, and once I came up with the solution, I was gonna record it, but very impulsive. Yeah, you know what? I think 220 is the way to go here. It adds just a little bit more of the whoosh back, you know what I mean? The attenuated mod made it go kinda like Wah, wah. And then adding that 220 back there made it go whoosh, whoosh. I have weird ways of describing these tones. The question is, do we need 387? Or will 470 be enough once we pull that 2.2 out of there? Either way, I've tried 1K before. It wasn't good enough. Maybe 470 will be the trick. 
because 470 ohms is often used in these kinds of circuits. I feel like I've 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 dealt with 470 before trying something like this. Uh, tone of a, a valve wizard schematic, a valve wizard effects loop that I built before once, and it was transparent. I didn't lose tone. I can't find it on his website anymore, and it, it too used a cathode follower send. So I'm gonna shut this down, and I'm gonna institute these modifications. And then, well, we might just call it good. All right, what are we doing here, sir? The old heat iron's been burning away on us. Now, some amps I confidently dive into because I'm used to the circuits and I know how they behave. This one, well, I'm gonna double check, make sure the power supply's discharged. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we're good. Okay, so we have a problem. This 2.2K here's gotta come out. Fortunately, this PCB seems reasonably easy to work on without taking the amp apart. So I generally can dislodge resistor from the top. Too bad I hooked the contacts. That's one side. Gotta sneak in here, burn up these capacitors a bit. Okay, I get that hole moist. Yeah, I know. I'll clear them out. Uh, use a pin tool to maybe poke them out of it. There is a wire right underneath that contact. Which means we've got to make sure we don't put it in too deep. Now I kind of use a little mirror to see underneath. As usual, I'm hovering the component a bit, so it's not a complete write-off if we have to undo this mod. Unfortunately, there's just enough room in the hole so that the solder can leach through to the bottom side and otherwise solder up the pad as it normally would. I know you can't see it, but there's a nice Nice solder joint there now. So our 470 is in place. Now we have to put our uh, 220 youth bypass cap. Gotta cut the leads to an even length. I just kind of hook her on there, pincer her up. What a friggin' hack job though, eh? I can't believe one of the most world famous amps has these kinds of flaws to it. But then, you know, as I understand, they were pretty much made to order. They weren't cookie cutter amps. And everybody who bought one, especially the celebrities, got something a little bit different just slightly tweaked to fit their needs. So it's very possible that this isn't the actual effects loop that most Soldanos actually had in them. Question is, do I wanna add that 100K over here, even though I didn't hear much of a difference? Well, let's fire her back up, make sure she's working, and the results I'm getting with the effects loop are uh, consistent with the tests, even though that impedance has changed a little bit. Let us play a the guitar. <laughs> We added like a hundred millivolts going from the three something to the 470. Oh, well, let's try it once again with the effects pedal. The effects pedal that oddly boosts signal. Okay, I think it's behaving consistent with the way it was before. Even though it might not be all the way down to negative 10 dB, the pedal's liking it. The only thing is the stupid pedal there has, has volume issues. I gotta go try another pedal that I have. It's an enhancer pedal. Got this from a hawk shop. Didn't really use it much because I wasn't really sure what it did that, that offered me, offered me, offers. Offers on the table of what? Enhancement. Oh, enhance what? At least it seems to work. Some of these boss pedals are like 20 years old and lately I've been pulling them out of storage and some were just dead. Okay, it sounds identical with the loop on and or off with the pedal connected. Then that enhancer really brightens it up. Other than the fact that that pedal sounds funny, it seems to work. Oh, I just remembered now. I know exactly what we need to try. Ye old EQ pedal, which is what we were trying to run when we noticed this issue. That works as it's supposed to now. How about this thing? This last time I used this thing. Sometimes a noise gate's handy. And in the effects loop, uh, it's probably a better place for it. Uh, 
Uh, except it's tricking the sensitivity with so much output. All right, so for good measure, I've done one last little thing to this, and that is I've added the 100K resistor. So in conclusion, my version of this mod, over here, I replace this with a 220 UF, the attenuator becomes a 470 ohm, and then on the output, after the coupling capacitor, this squiggly line represents a 100K resistor. Seen here, it was relatively easy because right here, is where that 220K grounds. And it's also the same ground plane as the effects loop if you did it the way I did, because the insulated cable we have here is feeding ground to the effects loop. And then, well, here's the other side of that coupling capacitor. I found, you know, it was so, so subtle. So subtle, I almost, you know, was using the force hearing it, but I found that putting that 100K on there, it slightly improved and evened out the sound. I think it's an impedance issue. All the other amp makers seem to do some variation of that 100k on the output and i believe it's an impedance thing matching the output matching what the pedals are expecting to see so i figure it's good measure and it's not going to hurt while we're in here anyway let's just give her a go so i'm going to end up uh delivering this back to buddy and letting him evaluate it again for another couple weeks before we do more changes on it i'm not even going to tell him that the tonal signature of the amp may have changed with this mod it's it's going to happen either way from what i've determined whether you do the 1k what they say in there whether you do what i did here it's going to change the sound of the amp. I didn't like the sound change in the Jet City. I'm not sure how I feel about this. It's it's not bad. It's not that bad. That 220 kind of fixes it up, but at least the effects loop is working now. So we'll see if he notices. Maybe he'll be happy with the tone and he won't notice. Uh, maybe a couple months later when he watches this video, he will, but I digress. So if you enjoy this, well, stay tuned for more. If you didn't enjoy this, I don't know why you're still watching. Maybe you're someone who wants to be like, bah, 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 you don't know what you're doing to the SRO. You know, I'm kind of overworking on this thing.